Okay, excellent. Now we just need to move on to the normal force, okay? So again, I'm gonna draw myself a new diagram. Good morning. <laughs> Long time no see. Um, the scale, repeating it, doesn't matter. It's which direction is it facing, okay? So you can see the normal is going off that way. So this is the normal now. Okay, and then you've got the two parts of it that matter. And then the rest of the diagram, we're just gonna fill in for the sake of completeness. Whoops, I've just drawn all over where I need my vector to go. And just like before, I mentioned it's really important. It's like, it's the thing, right? Where are all of the lines, where are all of the actual forces facing? So you can see, I always mark in, where is the point on which all the forces are acting? Because everything is going to be relative to that, okay? And this is really nice because it's like, oh, this is exactly what a projectile motion, like literally exactly what a projectile motion diagram looks like because off it goes, we've projected it from the origin off in that direction. So I've got this, which is M. Where is the angle that I'm interested in? Where is the angle that I'm interested in? Yeah, so you gotta be careful. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to add a little bit of extra onto, this is one of the advantages of having extra diagrams. Um, the relevant angle here is alpha. So here it is. Alpha is the is what defines how steep this cone is. So therefore, it's what defines the direction of the normal. So alpha is over here, right? And it's also measured from the vertical, right? So there's the cone. There's the actual cone. Okay. So you can see here if that's alpha, that makes this over here also alpha because that's vertical. Okay. But this, the whole point of it being the normal force is that this angle is uh. Right angle, okay? So that makes this over here pi on 2 minus alpha, or you could call this one alpha. In fact, I'm going to put all those in pi on 2 minus alpha there because they are adjacent angles. That makes alpha over here and alpha over here. Happy? Yep. Um, in a test, would you want to write the reasoning for everyone? No, no. Okay. So, so that's, yeah, that's kind of okay. Like, I mean, what we, what's, what's being assessed here is, do you know what directions things go in? And to be honest, I think that's perfectly sufficient. Like, you know, saying things, oh, like these are vertical. It's like, well, that's kind of the point of the whole diagram, right? So I don't think you need to go through lots of reasoning about adjacent angles, alternate angles. I think this diagram itself is sufficient. Okay. okay, so now that I've got all the right angles in the right spots, which is tricky, now I'm ready to actually use trig to work these kinds of things out. Again, I've got a horizontal component and a vertical component. I'll call this one, imaginatively, x of n. Uh, and just because I've run out of space over here, I'm gonna put y of n over here. Okay? Uh, but of course, that's equivalent to working out what my actual vector is. So someone wanna tell me, what am I gonna use? Let's do the horizontal one first. How do I relate this horizontal force to the normal? Uh, cosine. Cosine, very good. Cons alpha equals adjacent on hypotenuse, right? So from this, I just read off that if I make x in the subject, that's going to be n cons alpha. Okay, that's fine. And you're like, oh, right. That's like, this is back in the normal scheme of how I'm used to things. Because using this geometry in here, you can see, oh, now it's equivalent to me um, on the unit circle, measuring from the horizontal. Do you see that? Okay, so that's good. Uh, what else have I got here? To get to this guy, I'm going to use opposite of hypotenuse, right? So that's why sine comes in. So from that, I'm just going to read off. Here we go. This is n sine alpha. Done. All right, so I've got all of these forces resolved, but the last step that's important is to combine all of them to say, well, what's actually happening? And how do each of these bits and pieces contribute to what's happening? Okay. So this is um, said to you in the question, but it's moving in a horizontal circle, uniform circular motion. Okay. So that means on a vertical scheme, what's happening up and down? Answer, nothing, right? So on a vertical scheme, the net force is zero, right? So I'm gonna look at all of the vertical forces I have, all of them, including this guy, and if I add them all up, including their directions, they should all add to zero, okay? So I couldn't put it, oh, I'll use this. This is a space. 
So I'm going to say vertically stationary. Okay. So then have a look. How many forces can you see that are oriented up and down? I can see one, two, three. One, two, three, right? You can see there's this guy, which is facing upwards, positive. You've got uh, this one, which is also facing upwards. And then the third one is? Down. Yeah, the weight force, which is going down, okay? So I'm going to write that in that order with those signs that are informing those directions. So I've got um, T cos theta plus M sine alpha minus Mg equals zero, okay? You'll often see, for instance, in the solutions to the textbook, you will often see this written just as one extra step. Um, they're just going to write this in a balanced form, okay? By which they mean, look, these are going up, these are going down, it's not moving, so they must be exactly equal to each other. I've said to you before, I still prefer this because it informs direction. Like, whereas this one, you're like, which one's up, which one's down? I don't know. Whereas this, I think, is just a little more informative. That was vertically. Now, horizontally, it's moving in uniform circular motion. Okay? So therefore, I have again I look again and I say, well, where are all of the horizontal forces going? And they should add together to make um, MR omega squared in toward the center. Okay? Now this is slightly more interesting because when you have a look at the horizontal forces, they are opposed to each other, right? So this one's heading away, so I'm gonna call this one positive. This one is heading negative, so it's heading, I'm gonna, sorry, it's heading into the center, so I'm gonna call that negative. And in summary, they all are heading in negative, right? So I'm going to write, uh, let's see here, N cos alpha minus T sine theta equals minus MR omega squared, okay? Um, again, because, you know, we have this um, hatred towards negative sides, you will often see this written as T sine theta minus N cos alpha because they've just multiplied through, yeah? Um, and that is fine, it's still correct as you can see because these lines are linked, but I still kind of like this one because this is what makes uniform circular motion happen, it's a force toward the centre. Um, it is okay to define it, but it is unconventional. So if you were to do that, I would say something about it. In the same way that um, for a projectile motion question, no one would bat an eyelid if you didn't say up is positive and away is also positive, yeah. right? Because it's like, well, that's what we always do. But we don't have to, you know, when we've looked at an object that's, you know, falling versus we can define it as negative. Uh, and, so, and so you say something. Okay. All right, so our question is done. Now, I just want to point out before I show you the rest of these that I've already I've prepared earlier. What makes this, remember I said, oh, mechanics, right? What we add is an understanding of mass and therefore forces. That's what we, we have, which is new versus extension one, okay? The second thing which is kind of new is that this is what a projectile motion re resolution diagram looks like. But in mechanics, we, just, we don't care about them all facing the same direction. You know, they always face this way for projectiles or we define them to be. But in mechanics uniquely, you've got them all facing which all kinds of directions and so therefore you have to be careful. You've got to set this up whichever way it's going, as you'll see in all these other diagrams, they'll be facing in all kinds of different directions. So you need to be able to distinguish between those and therefore the signs, the signs really matter. Okay, things like this.